so far we've seen circuits with resistors or circuits with capacitors, but what happens when you have a circuit with both? So these are called RC circuits. And that's just telling you that it has resistance and capacitance in the circuit. So it might look like this. Or that has some resistance R, this has some capacitance C, and this has some voltage V. And so for this kind of circuit, uh, the order doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, like this circuit would behave the same as this circuit. But when we start adding other kinds of electronics to our circuit, then the order of your different circuit elements is going to matter. And so most of the time when we're doing these kinds of circuits, we're not going to have a, it's not going to be in one continuous loop like this, you might see something so the switch can either complete this circuit. Maybe I'll just do it like a close. So it can either complete the red circuit here, or it can complete the blue circuit here. So if we draw, let's draw them both. So with the red circuit, it would look like this. Kind of how I had it first drawn. And then the blue circuit uh, would just be the resistor and the capacitor together. So instead of drawing two different free body diagrams, you can kind of replace it with a switch like I had drawn here. And we'll see why that switch is important in a minute. So in the red switch picture, if we think about what the charge is doing, so the current is going to flow this way. And eventually, you'll have a buildup of This is You'll get a buildup of negative charges on this side of the capacitor and a buildup of positive charges on the other side of the capacitor. 
But we remember from when we learned about capacitors that capacitors will have a maximum amount of charge that it can hold. And that's based on the voltage of whatever battery you're using. So what happens when the capacitor reaches its max voltage is that the current will stop flowing in the circuit. So you can think of this as the max charge. And when capacitor reaches U max, current stops flowing. And this process is not instantaneous. So there's gonna be some time involved that it takes to go from zero charge to max charge. So this will be charging a capacitor. And the formula is gonna look something like this. So if you have, let's see. So there's going to be three different functions that we want. We want to know the voltage in the circuit as a function of time, the charge on the capacitor as a function of time, and the current flowing through the circuit as a function of time. you would get a formula that looks like this. So remember Q max is what we defined over here, uh, C times V or V times C. The voltage, and this would be the, the voltage from the like power source. So you could also think of that as V max or V0, maybe we'll call that. And so, uh, this is an exponential equation, and there's a new variable that I introduced called tau, and this is the time constant. And for an RC circuit, it is R times C. Resistance times capacitance. And so multiplying these two things together gives you a measurement of how quickly your RC circuit will charge your capacitor. And one of the interesting things about this is that, uh, if we look at the units for R, we have ohms. 
And if we look at units for capacitance, we would have farads. So the units would be ohms times farads. Something that you might not know about exponents is that the, um, the term in the exponent can't have units. So if you raised, like, if you think about what an exponent is, you're taking E, which is just some number, uh, and, you're multi and you're raising it to some power. So if you like squared E, that would make sense. You're just multiplying E times E, but what it wouldn't, necessarily mean anything if you raise a number to a unit, right? You can't raise, I'm going to take 10 and raise it to the ohms power. Like that, that doesn't really make any sense. So a consequence of this is that these units, ohms times farads, are seconds. And so that's how, that's one of the reasons why we have standard units is that when we combine them in these specific ways, we'll end up with other standard units that lets all of our math work out. So ohms times farads has the same units as time, which is seconds. So if I graph the charge versus time for uh, this circuit, you would get some kind of exponent that looks like this. And this is kind of a, a calculus thing, but let's say, that Q max is this red dotted line. The charge will approach Q max, but it will never quite reach it. So that's basically what an exponential tells you. Um, and another way to think about that is if you set time equal to infinity, that's the only way to get this Q to equal Q max. Uh, so if you took Q as a function of time and you set time to infinity, Q max times one minus E to the negative infinity over tau. And uh, let me write, this a bit differently, one minus one over e to the infinity of tau. So uh, because the e is to the negative power, that is the same thing as one over e to that power. And so if you think about uh, how exponents work, uh, if I raise some number to a really big power, what happens to that number? Right, so now put that in the denominator. If I have one divided by a really big number, that basically goes to zero. So this becomes Q max times one minus zero, which is just one, and you get Q max. So that's how exponentials work. And so this charge as a function of time depends on the capacitance in your circuit, the voltage from your battery, and the resistance. Because remember, the tower includes resistance and capacitance.
So all of those things uh, will impact your, your charge as a function of time. Discharging a capacitor. And that would be the second circuit that I drew where there's just a resistor and a capacitor. And so we're gonna assume that the capacitor starts out fully charged. So we had already done the previous step, we got it up to Q max. And now we're going to shut it off from the battery and or like unplug the battery from the circuit. And now it's just gonna be the the capacitor that is supplying the charge and therefore the current to the circuit. So when we're discharging the capacitor, we'll have a similar kind of equation. So the Q as a function of time, you can call it Q max or Q initial, whatever helps you remember it better. And then instead of the one, or instead of the times one minus e to the t over tau, it's just times e to the t over tau. And so all of those things are still the same. Tau is still rc. Q max is still whatever initial voltage you started off with times the capacitance. And now if you make a graph of charge versus time, you start off with some Q max up here, and then you exponentially decay down to zero. And same kind of logic applies here. If you set time equal to infinity, then Q max e to the minus infinity over tau. We saw that e to the minus infinity was zero. And so you just get that your charge at time goes to infinity is zero. And so the way that this can work is that you have a capacitor in your circuit. Let's say that your battery dies, your capacitor is gonna supply a little bit of time so that maybe you can save whatever data you're working on if it's on a computer or uh, there are different uses for capacitors that say you don't want all of the charge to enter this part of the circuit at a certain time. You can use combinations of capacitors and resistors to uh, kind of orchestrate uh, how the current flows to different parts of your circuit at different times. So that's charging and discharging for the charge. And now what about for the voltage? So we've got charging on this side and then discharging on this side. For the current, 
we saw for the current for the charge. We saw that for charging, you have this kind of formula. For discharging, you had this formula. For the voltage, it's going to be flipped. So the voltage that you start with is going to decrease over time. And this would be like, if you were to think about how effective your battery is in supplying voltage to your circuit, eventually as your capacitor reaches full charge, your the current is going to stop flowing and so that battery is no longer doing anything useful in your circuit. And then when you're discharging, you start off with some initial velocity or you start off with some initial voltage. And then here again, you'll start off with some max voltage and eventually you'll run out of charge. So the, the capacitor will no longer be able to supply the voltage to the circuit and your voltage is gonna decay. the current that's flowing through the circuit. So uh, this is kind of a, a calculus thing, but we know that current is the derivative of charge with respect to time. So you don't necessarily need to know that, uh, but what you do need to know is that if you do that derivative, then you'll get that the current flowing through the circuit is equal to the initial current, or let me, let's see. So if I do this derivative and get this, And now, so you don't need to know why the derivative works like this, but once you once we have done the derivative, you'll see that the capacitance goes away, and then we're left with V over R. And what's V over R? If we think about Ohm's law. Current. Right. So now we have our initial current times E minus T over tau. So I guess what, what's in the blue box, you don't necessarily need to know, but the result you do need to know. And then if you do a derivative on the discharging side, you'll see that everything is the same, except that there is a negative out in front. And what the negative is telling you is that the current is flowing in the opposite direction. So we had for a charging 
RC circuit that the voltage equation looked like this. And so this would be either the voltage from the battery or the voltage across the resistor. And then if we wanted the voltage across the capacitor, it would look like this. And so basically the, the voltage across the capacitor starts off small and then it reaches some maximum voltage. And then when you're discharging the circuit, the capacitor, that's when you start with a high voltage and you decrease your voltage over time. 